Hello and welcome on this uh, Monday afternoon for a bit of a, a crafty um, Christmas craft along with me, Simon Williamson. Um, thanks very much for joining me. Anybody who doesn't um, know who I am, I'm from Avagoing Design, so my name's Simon Williamson. We've got lots of social media out there, so give us a follow and a like, and you'll be kept informed with any notifications. So, into excited, an hour and a half of craft today with the lovely Christmas festive penguins. Um, hopefully some of you saw the Create and Craft show, it were amazing, weren't it? My first ever sellout. I was so proud of myself, I tell you. Um, and I got, I ran away with me, I started talking about a carvery, which I didn't understand why, but anyway, it was so, it was so lovely. So if you've got the penguins, congratulations. Um, if not, I have had a word with Tony, she says that if you can click the notify me when I'm back in stock link on the Outcraft Network, you can reorder some when that gets to a reasonable quantity. So. Please, if you really want them, go on and um, tick that notify me and then we can get them back in stock for everybody. So let's have a look who's on then. So uh, I can see lots of people today. We've got um, uh, Brian on, Irene, Roxy Lee, Leslie, Joe, Sarah. Oh, too many of you. Did I go, do a good job then on creating craft? Was it were like Christmas on a heat wave? I were burning, I've got to say, <laughs> it was so warm. Irene says, well done, let's tell out. And I'm my first ever sellout, Irene. Uh, Bridget says, yeah, and she's got, the, got mine on the tree. Oh, the tree is beautiful, isn't it? It's such an impact kind of die. Right. Well, I think we should start then. So I've got a few demos, and we'll see as how we can get to an hour and a half. So this is the first card I'm going to make for you. So a real nice one that pulls together a few elements of the whole collection. And this is going to give the three festive penguins with the cheeky little faces. And we're going to make use of that big sentiment, not made for winter. And we're going to just embellish it with a few extras, with a little snowflakes and some diamantes. So let's get started with this one. So I'm just going to get a piece of paper up first of all. If you've got any questions as well as we go through, just put QQQ at the front and I can answer them for you. So I'm going to use my um, distress oxide blue for this one. This one's the Mermaid Lagoon. And I just want to add a little bit of um, colour towards this corner area here, because this is where I want the darker kind of colour to lie. So let's build this up. Elizabeth says I did good. Brilliant. It were hot, I've got to say. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring that blue in from the corner, softer towards the middle. Just revolve it around a little bit. Do the same from this corner. I wonder where we're all tuning in from today then. I wonder um, if we've got anybody from abroad watching. Hello to America as well if you're viewing us. So I'm just taking that blue around the edge. A little bit softer towards the middle. Bring it a little bit more up here. Gives you kind of like a white area in the middle then, so it'll draw a bit more attention. I'm just going to deepen it down a little bit more on these edges. Irene said, did you not have a cool fan under the wobbly table you had? I didn't, I'm going to say. <laughs> Could have done with one. There we go. So I'll just move that piece of paper out of the way. I'll just turn it around a little bit so you can see. I want to put some little snowflakes into this now. So what I've done ahead of time is I've already cut out some to make like a little temporary stencil. You can see it's just got some of the basic shapes in there. I'm going to use this to actually get some darker snowflakes going on. So we'll just move that around a little bit. And so this one. We'll have that one going off the page there just to break it up a bit. And then I think we'll have one down here. There we go. 
So I'm happy with that. So I've broken up that area now, and that's going to be the background for our card. So what I'm going to do is get that mounted up onto the base layer, and then I can get that glue to be set in while we create the front parts for it. We've got a nice um, card, square card. I think it's 7x7, seven seven, but I'll just check. Yes, we've got a 7x7 seven seven card. I've just cut a glittery map for it, and then this is going to go straight on top. And that little bit of a red glittery board is going to really make that pop. So nothing too hard there for anybody. So I'll get my glue out and we'll get that assembled. Ooh, it's not coming out. I'm just getting my pokey tool just a second. So has anybody received the penguins then yet? You had some fun with them. Don't forget you can share your mates as well on the channel just so we can see what you you're up to and give other inspiration to other people. Let's get that on there, make sure this car is open the right way. That's a nice red glitter. If you were being a little bit frugal as well, you could cut this out the centre and then you'd actually be able to save a bit for another project. So Sarah said, I've voted for you, Simon. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we've been nominated for an award. Can you believe it? If you've got the chance and, and you'd like to, please vote, because it would mean a lot. Um, but Abigo has been nominated for Best for Kids, which is amazing. So I think we're just some really cracking characters on his um, stamps. Um, and I've, Tony's been nominated as well for a few categories. So if you do like Stamps by Me, then it's definitely a good time to go and cash your vote for them brands that you love. Give that push down. Simon says, I live in Scotland. So someone from Scotland. We're from Liverpool. Mm. So that's okay. So I'm going to leave that just to one side to be glue in. So I'll just push that off a second. So the next bit we're going to work on is this little um, semicircle in the corner. And that's going to house the sentiment. So we're going to use the die to cut this. And um, it'll give us like a, some kind of footing for those little um, penguins to stand on. If I bring in the, these plates. I've got a more glitter card. So I need to cut the larger one in the red. Let's check which one we which then. I'm going to cut this piece of glitter card down a little bit. So one of the best things with these magnetic ones as well is you can find your midlines using these grids. If I push that over to like there, and I want kind of a section like this for my card so that I can actually make sure it's going to cut the area that I want. So let's run that through first of all. Put that in there. And I'll get the darker blue ready for when that's cut through. I still can't believe I did a Christmas show on the hottest day, though. It was really warm. Well. Again, so I'm just going to swap over to the smaller one. Do the same again. I'm going to just push that, make sure I've got that corner area that I need. I'll just chop that bit off so it doesn't knock it when it goes through. I'll just pop that through. Yeah, I would, I, Elizabeth said good tip. I presume you mean the grid lines. I've got to say, I've started using them a lot more, actually, lately. It um, helps you get your car more central. Let's get rid of those. So now I have got the red glitter and I've got the um, blue layer as well, which we're going to be able to trim in a second onto this layer. So what I want to do first though is I want to emboss this with the sentiment before I glue it down. If I bring up the stamping platform, we know it's going to go in that orientation there. So I'll just put my mount towards the top and I've brought in that lovely big sentiment, which is not made for winter. It's such a big one as well. It's lovely. Let's just use that anti-static bag before we place this. Not made for winter. I'm not made for summer, me. <laughs> I'll pick that up. Let's 
I'm just going to get some embossing ink. Got the clear one, but you can get a pinky one if you find it hard to see where you've stamped. I'll make sure that's got a good covering. Push that down. I'm just going to go over that one more time just to make sure we get all that detail. Under there, out the way. Use reverse of this piece of paper. I'm going to use some white embossing powder on this, just because I think it really makes it pop. And a bit of a tap. Push that loose powder off that's just caught at the bottom, so I don't want it there. You could use a little brush as well if you wanted to, but I'm really happy with that. So I'm just going to put the loose powder back in its container. This is how I lost my last one. <laughs> Get that into there. So, Elizabeth said, did I get my carvery? Do you know, I decided not to. It was far too hot. Far too hot. <laughs> Thanks for your concern, though. <laughs> I'm just going to just change this now. So I'm going to heat this up. Just so we can get that to set. There we go. And if you notice it starts to walk your car, just eat it from the back and it should straighten it out for you. There we go. With that, I think I've got all that. I've just missed the bottom of that W. Let me just start before I rub it off. There you go. I'm really happy with that, and I think that's going to complement that little red glitter strip really well. So let's get this glued onto this, and then we know that we can trim this to the right shape. Plenty of glue with it being glitter card. I'm going to follow that curve that I've already cut. Just hold that down to grab a little a minute. Turn that over, put a bit more pressure onto it. The so Roxa Lee says she's not made for summer either. I know. I love. I love the fact it's sunny, but I don't like the temperature that goes with it. So, and you can't really pick one or the other, can you? So, I'm just going to trim this red off now, level with the the blue. Corner. There we go. So we've got that lovely shape now. I bring my card back in, and that's going to be the base of this corner sentiment there. Now I'm going to put some foam pads under it so it actually lifts it up a little bit for us, and that'll give us a little bit more dimension. So let's get some chunky pads. Yep. And we can pop that in the corner then down here. A bit of dimension, it brings that sentiment forward. So I've got a lovely base to our card now, and now we can start adding our penguins to finish this one off. So I'm going to push this to one side again, bring up the stamping platform. And I've got three of the little penguins here. Got the one with the antlers, the little Santa out, and the one with the lollipop. So what we'll do is we'll stamp them all out. You can see how crisp these are, these images. And don't forget, if you do fall in, fall in love with these little characters, they can be reordered if enough people want them. So make sure you click the notify me when back in stock link. I want to do that in versifying black so we get a nice crisp image. I love the faces, I think they're so cheeky. I 
I could push down. Using watercolour card for this, so I'm just going to make sure I get a crisp impression. I might have to do it again just to make sure I get into all that textured card. Joe says these are so cute. They are, aren't they? I were going to wear a Christmas jumper today, but I just couldn't manage it. I've got to be honest. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it one more time just to get these solid areas a little bit darker. There we go, give that a good push down. There we go. Just take our stamps off. Trying to be tidy as I go along. Let's move that under there. We've got our lovely little um, penguins there, look. So let's give them a bit of colour now. So I'm going to use some watercolour, so that's the fastest way to do this for me. But you could use whatever medias you like. A lot of people like alcohol markers, don't they? So they could get a bit of um, a layer up there using the different tones. Let's just build some of this colour up. Do a nice red Santa hat. And because the penguins, they don't need too much colouring really, do they? You're just picking out some of the details, what they're wearing. Just bring that around. I'm going to give them a nice red scarf to match his hat. Do a striper one, actually. We'll leave the middle bit white. And yeah, bring back in the fur of his pom-pom. And swap to a slightly smaller brush, so it's a bit easier. Um, his little feet. We'll do all the feet while we're here, actually. This one looks half asleep, doesn't it, bless him? Little beaks, just bring them to life. And then what colour scarf should we go with? I think we've got a red here, maybe a blue or a green. Should we go for like a bluey colour? Bring that blue through. Sarah says you could have worn your turkey out. I know it's too warm, Sarah. I will wear it near Christmas, I promise. I might even invest in a brand new app. There you go. There's a promise for you all. Just drag that blue down the scar. A little bit of detail in that tassel, but I like the little bits of white as well. I think it just makes it look a little bit more dimensional. Uh, let's get some antlers filled in. And then finally, we'll do his hat. So let, I think we'll go green. Um, Let's get some darker stripes in this. Just to break it up, and we can use a lighter green in between it. I'm going to leave some of the white there. We'll see it just adds a little bit more kind of like tone to make it look like it's rounded. The darker ones on these bits. And then just a little bit of colour in the pom-pom. And then let's add a little bit of green to this lolo. So 
I'm just following that line around where it's printed and make it more like a green and white swirly one there. And I think we'll finish off with just a little bit of this pale grey just on this hat to give it a bit of dimension, just where the fluff is. I'll get a very pale pink. Just so we can give them a bit of a rosy tummy. There you go. So we've got three characters now for his card. So I'm going to give them a quick blast with a heat gun just so I can dry them off. So we've got some other people joined us. We've got um, Kathy on, Phil. I nearly said Tim then, I realised. <laughs> I'm just drying that off. There you go. Let's get these characters cut out now. So let's get the dies. Where we put the dies? Here we go. And they're so easy to locate these as well. So we've got the Santa one, and then I just need the lollipop one. There we go. I'm going to secure them with the masking tape. We can cut all three together then, look. That's the Santa one. Just pop that down. And we'll get our reindeer cut out. Have you all been Christmas crafting at home then? I know there's been some beautiful products launched lately, haven't they? Elizabeth says, have you given them names? Do you know, I haven't, and I normally do try and nickname them, but I've got to say that depending on how you colour them, they can be like male or female, can't they? So I haven't really decided. I did nickname this one, though, Fishfinger. I don't know why, but I thought it was quite apt for him. There we go, I'm just bringing the cutting plates again. Just reverse this over. And then we'll pop this through. What do you think we should call them? Because they've all got different personalities, aren't they? So let's see if we can get some names for them. Lovely lollipop one. And the Santa one. And then just to tease that bit out. And then we've got this reindeer one. So really nice and easy to cut. So let's get these on as card. And we can decide which way we want them. So might want them this way. Or maybe the other. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think I prefer it that way. And then the lollipop's more inwards. So let's get those on some foam pads as well. Have I had any suggestions for the names then? I thought you'd love naming these guys. Yep, just going to tick his, tuck his feet in there. And then just pop that one on there. That one can go up there. And then just to finish this one off, I've cut out some little um, snowflakes from the dies that you get. So a few white snowflakes there. And we've got a few of the sparkly gems. Um, I can't actually remember what colour these are, but they're from Stamps by Me. They're like little opals, flat back. They're quite sparkly ones, look like little snow. So I'll just get my glue. I'm just add these snowflakes on. Have one of the white ones up there. Just 
put some little gems on to make these areas a little bit more sparkly. Get one more. I think we're there. Oh, Brian's the sleeping smiler. That's a good name, isn't it? There you go. So that's the that's the um, first card then made from this hour and a half of crafting for the Christmas collection. It's just really nice, isn't it? How it brings all them characters together. So you can see um, their cheeky faces, and it just makes uh, like a focal point for your sentiment as well. So hopefully that'll give you a bit of inspiration and an idea that you can um, use. And it just shows you how versatile them snowflakes are as well. You know what I mean? It just adds a bit more depth. Use them as a stencil from what your waist is, and then also use the actual um, white snowflake to bring it forward a little bit more. So it's really good, isn't it? I hope you like that one. So let's have a look at some of the things. So, oh, Joe says Penny the Penguin. And which one's Penny? Which one would be Penny? Uh, and then Roxalie says Dimples, Cheeky and Snowflake. Oh, I like them. I like them names. And you could easily make Dimples have some little cheeks, couldn't you? Right, so I'm going to put this one to the back. I'm going to get on with the next demonstration. So this next one I've done. Move that over there. I thought this was a really classy card. And it just shows you can use the elements yourself to make um, more of an adult theme card. I thought this was a really good way of showing you as well how you can use the trees in the collection to kind of give you like a focal point for your sentiment. So we're going to get on with this one next. So I'm going to move this paint out of the way so I don't want to use that next time. So I'll move that to one side. Right then, so I'm going to be using um, a card blank. I think it's five by seven. I just want to check. So I've got a five by seven card blank. So I need to cut a piece of coloured card that's going to fit the top of that. So if I just bring up my trimmer. Well, it's Tony's really. I think we'll do this one in red. So let's have a look. So five. By seven. Oops. To be honest with that, oh, I always, <laughs> always grab the score blade rather than the cut blade. Put that under that. And that's going to fit perfectly on the front of our card. Then we know it's going to fill that space in a nice position. What we need now to do is decide where we want to chop this. And the reason I'm chopping it is that we don't get any embossing powder onto the other side. So let's go. I think if we go maybe one and a half, maybe, maybe more. I think about there. Let's go about there. There you go. I've just cut it so it gives us two areas to work on. And then that way we can keep this, this section pristine. So I'm going to put that to one side so I don't get my finger marks onto it. I'm going to work on this part now. Bring up my stamping platform. Just give that a quick wipe. So I've got that black ink on there. I don't want to ruin the cardstock. And then for this one, we're going to use those um, lovely present um, stamps that you get in the collection. So I'm just going to give that a quick rub with the antistatic bag. And there's four of the presents, they're all different shapes. So let's get these put on where we want them. Want them a little bit off the card as well as on, so. I think that's quite good at that bottom corner. Give that a good push down. Elizabeth says, Tony's got a tool security alarmed. Oh, I know. Weeks I heard about that magnet, I've got to say. <laughs> Although, in fairness, I brought Simon under what I brought, just so I know where it is. 
So give that a good push down. And then what I'm going to do, rather than risk this ink drying out, I'm just going to come in with a gold embossing powder and just put a layer on this first of all. Tip that off. Make sure we've got what we need. And I'm going to continue doing that before I actually heat it. So I'm just going to put that back in the tub so I know where it is. And let's go in with our second layer now. Let's move these around. So I think we'll have this one coming in over here. This one right up here. Uh, that one going that way, I think. And this one can go just there. You might move that one up a tad. There you go. And we'll just pick them up again. And because the Eureka is raised off the, the um, bed of the card, you're not going to knock that powder off that you've got ready to change. So let's sync that up again. <laughs> so Elizabeth says, I need an amnesty day. Could you imagine, as crafters, if we have to take back all the little bits that we're not quite sure where we've obtained? <laughs> It'd be fun, wouldn't it? I've got to say. There we go. I'm going to bring that piece of paper back in. Add that embossing powder over these others one we just stamped. Tip that off. A little more. Let me just brush that with my finger. There you go. And I'll put this away and we'll go for the final ones then. So it depends how you prefer to work. I prefer to do it this way, but you know what I mean you might want to just heat change it as you're going, then you're not going to knock it in any way. Let's put that one up there. I think we'll have that one going off up there. And I think we only need one this time, so I think we'll bring this one back in. Put that one up there, look. Pick that up. And push them down. Just get them last corner bits on. Get a piece of paper. And we'll just sprinkle that powder over them last three parcels. Perfect. I'm just going to put that just gently to the side just a second while I get rid of my powder. I'm terrible at home for dropping the powder, losing it, so I'm being very conscious to be very um, careful with it at the moment. Let's move that out of the way. And let's see it emboss this one. Now this gold should really shine once it's done, so let's have a look. There you go, it's starting to change now. It gives a lovely luster, doesn't it? Especially on the gold card, uh, the red card. Looks nice on the navy as well, very traditional for Christmas. I, do, I could watch this all day, I really could. Let's get these other ones done. It's like magic, isn't it? It's like it just appears. Just turn that around so I don't burn my fingers. I think I've got all the edges there. There we go. So there we go, we've got our little panel that we've made, and then what we previously did, didn't we, we cut that slither off that we're not going to use. So now we can bring them back together so we've got two components. So let's get these glued onto his card blank. So is that red card pearlized? Uh, yeah, it's got a slight shimmer to it. It has, yeah. I don't know where I got it from, though. <laughs> I'm going to stick this towards the outer edge of the card. 
could turn that over and open it a second so I can see what I'm doing. Give that a good push down to make sure it's in place. Joe says, lovely size present stamps. I know, it's, I do like having the extra stamps, but there's no point having them if they're too small to use, is there? So let's get this clear strip put next to it. And then button that right up to it so it, it lines up. And then just while that glue takes hold of those, I'm going to get in some gold mirror card that I've got here. So I'm going to bring up the trim actually. I want to slither really, so I'm just going to hold that at the top, make sure it's level. And I'm just going to bring this in. And that's going to cut me a nice piece of gold. That's going to be covering my joining line then. So you can see it just brings in them two colours all back together, the gold embossing and the red. It gives it a bit of a divide. And we'll just give this a bit of a run of glue. Just. There we go. Push that down. Make sure that's in place. A lovely card base that though. So you could even put your sentiment down here and it'll be finished. But I want to just elevate the sentiment a little bit more. So I'm just going to just chop that level. I'm just going to put a little bit of weight on that so it's not, um, it's not a lot of glue. So just put it under my box just a second. And then I'm going to bring up a piece of this gold. So let's just cut an arrow piece for us. And I'm going to use the lovely tree die that comes in that collection. So it's this one I'm going to use, the one without the little trunk. So I'm going to cut this out twice. So let's get that popped through. Okay. Just send that through. Yeah, the, the present stamps, that's what I was saying. And I love the size of them because you can make a card without using the characters. I think that's a, a good sign of a good stamp set, if I'm honest. So that's one tree. I'm going to do it one more time. Just pop that through. And then while we're cutting, we might as well do the next step. And we've got those two gold trees, which are going to really focalise the sentiment. And then we're going to have a larger square and the inner square, which is going to be for the sentiment. So let's get some card onto these. Chop that a little bit bigger than we need. I can go on that side. And then we'll chop that one. We can use the back of that piece of red card as well. So let's pop that up. And then we'll run those through. And then we'll have all the components then we need to get that sentiment put back together. So we've got our lovely red square and we've got our white square there. So let's move them out of the way. And while we've got our stamping platform up now, let's get our sentiment put into the middle of this little square. So I'm going to go with the um, with love sentiment. So I think it's just really a nice sentiment for this card. Let's get that in position. So with love right in the middle. And I've also got an ink that's as close as I can get to the cardstock that we're using. So I thought it would all tie together nicely. I'm 
just got a little bit of the blue from the previous make on there, which is not the end of the world. It actually gives quite a nice effect, gives a bit of a tone. Let's get that out of there. Right, so what I'm going to do with these gold trees, I'm going to cut them down the, the center, uh, center right down to the tip. Do the same for the other one. There we go. And then what you can do is you can use these to frame your sentiment. So you can either have them going that way, so you've got more bulkiness on the edge, or you can flip them the other way around, so you've got more bulkiness around the top. So I think for the card that we're making, I'm probably going to do it this way, but then it will kind of keep the line of the card when we make it. So let's get a little bit of glue onto this. And then we're just going to pop those on, just onto the edges. I'm going to go around again. Oh, I'm proper thinking now which way, which way it went then, in case I got it wrong. <laughs> and then go around that way. Make sure we've got those bits in place. I'm just going to use a little bit of tape to secure it at the back because I don't want this glue to move while I'm turning it over. And you'll not see this at the back anyway, so. It's always best to secure your work, isn't it, than ruin it. We'll turn that over. We've got a lovely kind of area now for a sentiment to sit within. So that can go in there. That's lovely. So put that into there. Actually, we could go. Let's go that way on this one, actually. Just holding that down so it gets secured. That's lovely. I'm going to bring back in our card blank that we made. You can see that's really going to pop on that line now. Let's bring in some foam pads. Well, I've just lost my foam pads. Here we go. And I'll just pop that. There we go. Pop that over there. And that's the second make. So really, really clean and simple card, that one. But just shows you, like, get them little stamps out that you've got at home and just, like, emboss them. You could make a set of these. What a lovely gift to give somebody. You could have, like, a red, blue, green, and a gold one. Just showing that embossing of them, little details on them flower, um, presents, not flowers. Where am I going? <laughs> so hopefully you've enjoyed the first two demos. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to be playing um, some inspiration from the Avago um, range so you can find out a little bit more about it. But you might be new to the channel, you might be going, what's this um, crazy guy doing today? <laughs> They'll tell you a little bit of Avago and it'll show you some of the other products that we've been selling. So I will join you in a couple of minutes with some more demonstrations. We'll see you soon. Hi, my name's Simon Williamson. I'm the guest demonstrator for Avago Ink Designs. So Avago Inks is a, it's basically images that we can put together so anybody can have a go. I think I love the most about crafting is it can just give you time out in your own head. It can just down tools, not think about your mobile phone and just enjoy what you're going to do. Create a project and be proud of what you've made. My inspiration comes really from lots of sources. I love like looking at current trends. I like looking through the internet. And I like looking at what other people make. And I think truly inspiration comes from picking bits out of everything you see, pull it all together and make it something that you can do with your skills. Avago products, we've got three collections out at the moment. We've got as dinosaur range, as farmyard range, and as little owl collection. And the main crux of the actual design is that there's a big image there, and little characters you can play around, have fun, and there's always some puns in there as well, so you can liven up the card and make it a bit humorous for everybody. I think if you're thinking about trying one of our products, is don't be afraid. Just buy any of the kits that you, I mean, you feel like you want to, and you'll always create a really good card from there. There's some good characters, good sentiments, and some really fun images in there. So just, just grab one and have a go. Okay, 
and welcome back. So hopefully you enjoyed that little bit of um, a video about the inspiration of Avago. It just shows a little bit what we're about, really. It's all about having fun and having some big images to play around with to get some good cars put together easily, whatever your achievement level or age. So it's all about everybody having a go, which is where the name came from. So I thought we'd have a bit of fun on this next one. I thought we'd make a cracker. So you might have seen this on Create and Craft as one of the um, demos I had on the table, but I thought it's a really nice gift and you could put your own little um, treat inside as well. And it's so easy to make. The actual cracker is only made out of one piece of A4 card. I'm going to show you how to make this now, okay? So you're going to need a scoreboard. Now you can use a smaller one, but I did just notice Tony's got a bigger one, so I'm going to borrow this, even though I didn't ask her. But I'm sure she'll be fine with that. I'm just. Oh, will not break it. I just need to get this to one. There we go. A little bit nerve-wracking. So the first thing I'm going to do is you're going to get a piece of mirror card. So hopefully that's not too dazzling for you. Oh, I'll turn this back. Actually, it's easy for me to do it this way. So I'm going to score this. Now, as you can see that we've got um, just a little bit over eight. So I'll just pull that down a little bit. So you can see across the top, we've got just over eight going on the, sh the shortest side. So we're going to make a score line at two four and six and eight and then that will become our glue flap so we can actually get our cracker shape so let's start with doing these then so let's score down two down four down six and down eight now before we go any further i'm just going to Use the actual bone fold and make sure that all those creases are in really well. So, first one. That's second one. That's that one. This one's a little bit more fiddly, so we just have to just help it a little bit. Just because it's only a, a narrow strip, really, isn't it? But it does go. You can use your bone fold as you go with it. There you go. Then we're going to go back onto the scoreboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to score this. And I'll just check this measurements that I've made. Two and one. Right. So I'm going to score this at two and three. And then we're going to do the same from this edge. We're going to go two and three. So we're going to do this side first. So two. Three. I'm going to go halfway between the two and the three now. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do exactly the same. So we're going to go for the two, go for the three, and then go halfway between them two. So I've tried to pick a colour you could see these on. So you're probably seeing them lines as best as you can, really, as it's holographic. It's that easy for you to see, actually. There you go. So you can see here we've got that, we've got them lines here. These are going to be the ends of your crackers. These are going to be tied together to keep the contents in. That's going to be a centre panel and then the same on the other side. So let's move that board out of the way. And I'm now going to just crease these. So the first, the inner one of the three folds that we've done, we're going to fold this way. And then we're going to do the middle one the opposite way. And then the other one back down. If I, if you can do, if I say, show it that way, you can see you've got like a V going inwards. So we'll do the same for the other side. So we'll fold the inner one, the outer one, and then we'll come back for the middle one that way. And then that way we've got our little cracker coming together now. So we're just going to nip into this now with some scissors. So when we're gluing this together, we don't really want this tab here, so we're going to remove this bit here, so we don't need that. So let's just chop that out of this cracker. Ooh. Do the same for the other side. Just chop that little rectangle out there. I feel like I'm hypnotizing myself. <laughs> Right, and then what we're going to do then is when we fold these over, every time we've got a fold, we need to put a V into this area, and that's going to help you put your ribbon in. So use the lines that you made. That's the first one. 
fold on to the next one. Do the same again. Don't worry as well if it's if you're doing it by eye, but it really won't matter because it's where the ribbon goes and you won't see any of this. So that one there, that one there. And I'm just going to snip the other one a little bit more in. And then turn it around into this outer edge here. If I turn that over now so you can see. You can see that clearly enough on the map. So we've got the four little compartments there that when we join up, that's going to be the bit that scrunches in as the cracker, you see? So we'll do the same for the other side now. Now we'll just chop into those. This is a great one for the kids as well, isn't it? You could have fun doing these together. And wouldn't it be nice to like make these for Christmas Day and put a little gift in each one? Just turn that one around. Final one up there. I'll just get rid of those bits that we don't need. Okay, so we've got our cracker template there, all made from one piece of card, which I think is really natural really, and really easy to do. So it's a universal measurement you can all follow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some double um, red liner tape on these joins ready, and then we're all prepped when we assemble. A little bit onto this one. And then we're going to put another little bit onto this one. This end bit is. Okay, so that's our template made. So now what we're going to do is decorate these sections here. So we're going to decorate them before we stick them on. So I can put this to one side just for a second. I'm going to bring in some strips that I've already made. So I've cut a middle section, which is the same length as the middle part of that cracker. And I've done the same for each end. So you can see that these are the bits we're going to add our pattern to now. So really simple, really easy. Remove move the black bits out of the way just for now. Let's bring this in. So I've already made a stencil look using those snowflakes. I'm just going to use these again. I'm going to use another little um, ready pink colour as well that I've got. So just going to ink through and get some of these snowflakes all over this piece of white card. And then we can move that down, turn it around so it's in a different orientation. I was to say, I made crackers for the first time last week. So easy to make, definitely be doing well. They are, aren't they? And do you know what a lovely gift to somebody as well? Because they're so personalised. You can put little pictures in. What about like, um, like pictures of the grandchildren for the nan and granddad? I think it'd be a lovely gift to have. So I'm just adding these snowflakes to break this white up. One more in this corner. And then I'm going to bring in these strips. We'll do the same for these. Just making sure I get some detail in all these to break them up a bit. I'd also say as well on these bits, you don't need to use a heavy GSM as well. So it's easier to fold if it's a little bit thinner paper. And then just get this done onto here. There we go, so that's really good. So then. I did actually think, though, when I made this last time, that these air open areas are a little bit too white. So then I used the actual card edge just to put a little bit of detail to break it up. I think it just makes it look a little bit more icy as well. 
Now you just swim in all different directions. Just to break it up, you can cross them over as well. There we go. And it just, just breaks up your centre panel a little bit. The same on the edges. I'll just do one more up here. There you go. So it's just a, not mean, a way to break it up a little bit so it's not so open the area. You could use pattern paper as well. You might have got some lovely pattern paper in your stash that you want to use instead. So feel free to do what you prefer. Right, so I think I might use my tape runner for this one. I'm just going to mount this onto the black first of all. So we've got a nice um, border on either edge. And do the same for these little strips. And there we go. And then we'll do the same for this one. There you go, so we've got our three main decoration areas now. So I'm just going to bring up that scoreboard again. And because we know that we're going to be doing two, four, six, and it finishes at eight, I'm just going to just score them to help it when we actually assemble this. So two, four, six. Two, four, six again. Take those off. I'm just going to make sure all those folds are going to work nicely. Use the bone folder again. <laughs> Elizabeth, I've just seen your comment. Are you trying to get me in trouble with Tony? <laughs> It's not labelled it with a name yet, though, so technically it's free. <laughs> there we go. We've got all our main areas now. So we're going to use our tape runner again just to secure these. Just pop that down that centre. There we go. And do the same for the other end of the cracker. There we go. And the centre bit. You could use wet glue as well, so it'll give you a little bit more wriggle room, I would imagine. But I like the tape runner, find it. It works for me. Uh, there we go. So we're going to take this um, line of tape off now. So I'm just going to get my pokey tool and get those um, backings off that. Ooh. Oh, do you know, we always fight me in this tape. There we go. And then this last bit. And the best way I find to do this is if you fold that one to the centre, then you can fold this to the centre, and it should all line up for you. There we go. And there we go. Just make sure we've got that nice and secured. You can see we've got our cracker now coming together, and you can see from that overhead there that when these push together, it goes into traditional cracker shot. So that's perfect, isn't it? You couldn't get a better cracker, and it's really easy. And once you've done one, you can do a box full, honestly. Let's get this some ribbon on this now to tie it together, and then we'll get it to character to finish off. So let's go. 
these three colors. Just half what I've got. We'll just tie those around that end and this just keeps the contents in. I'm not really good at bows, but we'll try and get a bow. <laughs> There we go. The same for this side. Try and get my bows to the same position so it looks neater. There we go. And then if I just quickly just reach over here just a second. We can finish it off with one of our little characters. Don't actually think it needs a tree, actually, so we'll just take him on. Have a bit of glue on this, I think. There you go. So, I don't know which way is, which way is best is that one, or do you want it stood up? And then that's the other colour there. What a lovely, what a lovely gift you could make for somebody as well. And you know what I mean? It just shows you how those simple characters can be so impactful on a project and just bring it to life. And that's what we want, isn't it? And I love the faces. And can you imagine filling that with a little gift for somebody? Some chocolates or, do you know what I mean? Just like, fill it with or a little message to somebody. And the best thing as well, they're so pet friendly, aren't they? Because they're not going to go bang when you pull them. So. Hopefully you enjoyed that make. I'm just going to set up for my second one. That's just over here. Just give me two seconds. Let's move that out of the way. Here we go. So this one, I love a wreath. I've got to say at Christmas, I love a wreath. And I just think this sums up whatever goes all about. And it's just the simplicity of using one stamp and a sentiment and creating a card. So look at this beauty. Look how, look how that looks so expensive. And it's only using your tree die cut and your penguin in a sentiment and that's something we could all achieve i think it's lovely that one so let's show you how we're going to make this one that's to one side all right so so the first thing i'm going to do is create the layers that i need to assemble the um, actual wreath so let's bring the cutting plates in I'm going to need, oh, I nearly did it wrong then. Tony would have had a go. <laughs> nearly cut downwards. It's always cut upwards. All right, let's run them through first of all. This is going to give us, like, layers that I can actually, um, sandwich things together. So, how's everybody enjoying it? I wonder if we've got anybody new. If you are new and you've just like switched on, uh, my name's Simon Williamson, I'm here from Have A Go Inc. So we're here every Monday with inspiration. Um, we do have um, obviously a channel you can follow and we've got a Facebook page as well. So if you hit the notification on there as well, you'll be kept informed of any upcoming news, any shows or any um, samples or any inspiration that we can offer you. Um, it's a really nice, um, loving place to have a follow as well. So, um, give us a give us a follow, and um, yeah, it's nice that you joined us, wherever you are in the world. So, let me just um, I need to get a large one of this one now. We'll just run that through. I should have cut these out ready, shouldn't I? I kind of thought an hour and a half we're going to be ages, and it's not, is it? So I, I was just really enjoying it. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like the, the inspiration as well. Obviously, it's, do you know what I mean? It's not nice when you buy stamp sets and you just don't know what to do with them. So it's nice to continue the inspiration afterwards, isn't it? 
So we've got a centerpiece there and we've got a sentiment piece, which is going to go over the top of that. So I'm going to put this to one side for now so we can keep it nice and clean and out of the way. And then to save a bit of time, I did already cut out some trees for us, look. So I've got some in the light green and I've got some in the dark green. And this is going to actually bring us wreath together. So I know that my card that I'm going to make is 8x8. Eight eight. So I'm going to use the grid on the actual board to show you my blank card, actually. So this is going to be our 8x8, eight eight, look. And then I've got my green mat. And now we've got our lovely tartan layer. And that's going to bring all these colours back together, isn't it? So I know that if that's my centre point, I don't want these trees to be like over the card, really. So it gives me an idea of where to put them. So I would always start on here with the first layer, and then we can use this as a gauge afterwards. So if we just pretend that's stuck down, I'm going to put a little bit of blue just there and there. Or do we want the dark ones at the back or the front? I think the dark ones at the back. So let's, put, let's swap that to dark. And we'll put one on this side. And then we can move this off then now so we know what kind of dimensions we're using. So I'm going to run some more glue around this side now. Hit the middle. I'm going to place the dark ones first so I know that I'm comfortably going to get kind of six in there, all right? So let's get these all put into place. You can see now we've got his first two in, it really helps, doesn't it? You know that you're going to get the right size. And I'm going to put another glue layer now, just going around this bit. And then we can layer up the lighter trees. So these are going to go in between. In between that one. We're only a little Australian tree then. Bringing that down and then down to there. Ooh, a bit more glue on that one, I think. Because we've used glue, we can also just put that in the center and we can have a look. So if we think it's a little bit short at one side, we've got time just to pull it out a bit and hold it down into position. Right, let's get this now glued on top. And then that's going to become the centre of our wreath. How easy was that? Push that down. I'm just going to turn this over just a second. Make sure I've got everything secured. Right, so that's our lovely wreath. So I'm going to keep that to one side now, just over there. And I'll bring up the stamping platform for this. So let's bring that back up. How are we doing for time? Not sure how long we've got. Just, uh... Okay, so that's there. And I think we'll have... I think we might have this other little Merry Christmas sign that comes in the... I think it's the train set. I think that'll look really nice. So let's get that there and there. And then we're going to just stamp these. A little penguin again. Add a bit more ink on the penguin. Move that one out there so I don't smudge it. So Roxley says she's loving the longest, longer show. Oh, I can't speak. I put my teeth in. Put that under there. Let's bring in some watercolours again. 
there's not a lot of colour to go on this, but because it's got a Ponacetta on its head, I just think it really kind of comes back into the card, doesn't it, in the red and green. So let's get some of that lovely green in there. Just dabble in some darker green, and then I'm going to go back in with some lighter to break it up. Just thing. Here. Yeah. And there's some of this nice lighter green. Just to finish off some of those. Gives a little bit more de definition as well when you change your tones. And then we'll get some nice right on these ponacetas as well. Nice, this rich red as well, isn't it? You get white ponacetas as well, or am I just dreaming that? No, I'm just taking some of that red onto those little petals. And then we're just going to use some of that darker, almost like a pinky colour, just to lift areas of that as well. There we go. And then we can't leave him with no feet, can we? So let's give him some lovely orange feet. So easy to fill in these though, aren't they? And then Give him a lovely light green scar, and then that'll tie everything in together. I've got his beak, haven't I? I've got lots of talent. I need to give him a bit of a beak. Now, I think on this one, I'm just going to. Put some orange down, but then come back in with some water just to drag that back out. Give him a bit of an orange tummy look. There we go. I'm just going to just dry that off with the um, heat gun now. So I says you can get some off-white ponacetas. I thought I was dreaming, I thought they were all red then, but... Let's move that paint out of the way. Let's get my dies. Where did I put the pun on the one? Here we go. chop that bit off with the paint and so we don't want to put that through the die cutter. There we go, just pop that on there, just get some um, tape to hold it in place. And then turn it the other way, else it cuts the, into the mat. Pop that in there. Run that through. So we need to assemble this card up. So we'll just wait for that to cut and then we'll assemble it all finally. What an amazing life today, love all the inspiration. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad I'm inspiring people. That's what I'm here for. As a lovely little character look. So let's get the tape running for this one, I think. And just make sure it's up in the right way. Let's get the green on first. Just leaving a little bit of a white border just to make it pop even more. I've got this lovely tartan that I found in my stash. Tartan's so Christmassy though, isn't it? It's lovely. It just brings your cards together. And then we'll get that lovely tartan layer on. And then we need some foam pads on this, I think. So let me just grab my chunky foam pads. 
Here we go. Let's give it some real dimension. And the best thing is with these trees from this um, new collection as well, is they're being cut as well so that you can actually raise these little areas up. So we'll just raise a few up to give a bit of texture. So easy to do as well. There you go. You don't have to because the details there, whether you raise them up or not, but you know, it just gives a little bit more definition by pulling a few of those up. Okay, let's take the back of these off. Let's put that in the centre of our card. I think it's just about there. Let's get our little white sentiment on some foam pads as well. Get some right definition going off then, can't we? Let's have a look. So we can either have our penguin on top, or I think at the side of this one. So let's go this way. Merry Christmas going sideways. And then we're going to get the penguin on a foam pad. So we've got some lovely um, dimension going off. Let's have a look. Let's pop that character there. And then where would we be? We have our lovely stickles. I've got a lovely cranberry and crystal colour. And that's just going to really bring this card together now. So we'll get a little bit of sparkle on the flowers. And I'm going to put some like, little baubles on these branches as well. Just going around when they're red. And then I'm going to go around with the crystal one as well, just to sort of give a little bit more kind of sparkle to his card. Um, I, think that's, I think that's blocked, actually, so we'll leave it there because I don't want to ruin the card. And there we go. And look at that. I mean, that's, that's like a showstopper, isn't it? If you receive that, you'd love that card. Absolutely love it. A nice big um, like focal point. And all using that little tree die as well. So it's perfect, isn't it? A perfect way for you to craft. I'm just going to pull this to this side a second. I love it on the tartan as well, and them stickles just really finish it off. So... Oh, I'm just, just tidying this mess up for a second. If you're in a noise, that's me. Right then. So, I think um, we should um, squeeze another demonstration. I think we've got time. Are you all right? You can always catch up if you need to leave, so I do appreciate that. But I've got one more prep, so I think we should have a go at this next one. So, let's have a look. Just move that to the back a second. So this next one is such a fun card. It just shows you how you can use your lovely scenes really to bring it together. And you can see that sparkle on there as well, how that snow just really lifts it. And that's just such a simple card, really is. So let's um, show you how to put this one together as well. Let's put that over there. I'll just get a scrap of the card. Oop. So I've already cut um, my backing piece of card, and I'm just going to use some more ink on this one. So I'm just going to grab the blue ink, just two seconds. Let's put it. Just two seconds. Sorry about this. Here we go. Can't see for looking. So I'm just going to use the blue ink on the top half of this card to give a bit of a skyline going off again. Let's bring this in from the corner. I do like these blues. I think it really sets off like the snowy kind of effects. So I'm just bringing that blue in again. 
the softer as we go. And the same from this side. I'm bringing that down as well. And just bringing that towards that center, just to soften that white area. The same from the opposite side. There we go. So that's our sky layer put in. You could as well, because it's reactive, we can use a little bit of water on there as well. So let's do that and then we can splatter it. Look like falling snow when this starts lifting. We'll just give that a second to grab. Just give that a second to lift off that balloon. That should have done it. There you go. We've got almost like little snowflakes now coming through the skyline as well, which is just subtle, but it really adds to it. So for this card, I'm going to put the sentiment on now so I know where I can work with. So I'm going to use the big Merry Christmas one on this one now. Let's get that. It's such a big stamp as well, isn't it? It's a lovely Merry Christmas one. I'm going to put that just in this top corner here. And you could like mat and layer it up, but I think for this card, there's a lot going to be going on anyway, so we don't want to do too much with it. And I think it really pops doing it in black in the skyline. Put that Merry Christmas up there. There we go. Just pop that out. Put that under there for a second. So it's going to be the base of our scene then now. So what I've also done is cut some strips of card. Um, I've got a bit of a texture to this as well, but they can pick that up on camera, just so it's not plain card really. That's going to be like the back layer, and then we're going to have the front layer down here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rip these edges to create a bit of texture for the snow layers, okay? So let's do that as the next step. I'm going to do it by hand as well. So I'll just give it a little bit of a, a rip so we can get some snow eels going. And then this bit here is the front bit. There you go. I'm just going to just try and find a piece of paper. I just have to use this. I don't. I know it's got the blue one, but it'll not. It'll be fine. So when I use some glue now on these ripped edges, I'm just going to just put the glue to follow the rip that we've done. Get my pokey tools. My glue's blocked. There we go. So I'm just going to follow them rip like edges that we've done, but also just encourage some of the as if it was like melting down. And the same for this layer. Just bring a little bit into that white. And then I'm going to use that lovely um, sparkly sequin um, glitter that they have. I think Tony's still got this on a website, but it's lovely. It's got little like iridescent love hearts in there, but it just has so many colors on it. It's lovely. Let's just get some of that on these ripped edges. It goes so far as well, this. There we go. So we're just going to just bring that off. And you can see we've got like a lovely kind of ice line now using that glitter. Just shake that excess off. Put that to one side. Do the same with the other bit. You can see it's lovely, that kind of glitter line. It just really, really adds to it, doesn't it? You can see all them colours and that texture in that car just it works together really well. So I'm going to pull that down there a second and then that'll give that a bit of time to grip with the glue so it doesn't come off everywhere. Let's move that out of the way. Let me 
This is where I'm going to get glitter on my face, isn't it? <laughs> right then, so, rather than cut all these bits out, I have pre-cut some of these to make it a little bit faster for everybody. So I've already got some of these trees that from the lovely dyes that we've got. I've done them in some different tones as well, so we can see what works best. So we could use a glittery one, but I think I'm going to go for those three this time rather than the glittery one. So let's move that to one side. So the first layer we've got is this one at the back. And we know that that can go into position there. So let's get that one glued down first of all. Let's get that flat onto the actual skyline. This is when you can see the card coming together then. And I don't mind if this actual um, lip of the card doesn't go flat because I think it has more texture to it. Okay, so let's get some of these trees glued in now. We'll put that one in up there. Oh, the other one just over there. And I think I'm going to go back in with this, the other shape one and just push that a little bit lower. It can go in there, look. We've already got a really nice scene coming together now, haven't we? I'm just going to leave that to one side. So now we're going to get as characters for this. So for this one, I've already got our lovely um, reindeer one with the um, little um, scarf on. And I've got some lovely presents I've already started to add some colour to. So all we need now is one of the carriages for them. So let's get a little bit of colour onto this car carriage. So Roxley says, I think I bought this glitter one in the shop. It's addicted, this glitter, I tell you. It comes in a few different colours as well. I think there's a yellow and a green kind of colour. But it's just, it goes so far, it's lovely. So let's have a think. So we've got purple in that one. So let's go for a nice little darker purple carriage. Ooh, just push that across. Let's get some more of that purple coming from the other side. Could use a bigger brush really, it's my fault. I'm just trying to there we go. And I think we'll have some grey wheels. So we can actually earth this little carriage. So good though. I did have an idea for these little carriages though. Wouldn't it be nice to like cut loads of them for your family and have the train and then have like an initial uh, for everybody that you know in your family? I think it'd be a really personal kind of gift you could give somebody. I'm just going to darken that a little bit more. And then look, what colour top shall we have? Should we have a blue top, I think? Let's have a blue bit. Just take that over there. And then just add a little bit more to these little rivets, just to bring them up. I think I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to give that a quick blast with the gun, just to dry off. You can add more detail to this if you want to. At least you'll see how we can build this scene using it now. So let's get that cut out now. I'm not doing bad, am I? I think this is the longest show I've ever done. Just put that on there. Just get a little bit of this masking tape to secure it from moving. There we go. It's just slipped a little bit. Let me just make sure that's lined up. Turn that over. 
we just run that through again. And we'll bring our card back in. Before I put the rest of the layers on, what I'm going to do is just mount it up on the actual card blank. And then we know that we're building our scene to a finished point. So just get that out of there. We go. We've got a little carriage. Oop, I'll get that in a second. So let's get this glued onto our red card blank first of all. I think this would be great fun for kids, you know. Just build your scenes up. And, and do you know what? I'll, like someone's put on there that you don't need to fussy cut, which is brilliant. Avago will always give you um, a die when it's too hard to cut. If it's an easy, a really easy shape, then we tend to try and save the cost and just do it as the actual stamp so it's more achievable for everybody. But if it's an intricate kind of like design, we will always give you the dies to go with it. Okay, so let's get this layer put on next then we can build this scene. So we're going to use some foam pads on this. To excuse my hold, I don't want to knock that glitter off. There we go. And then we're going to put that there. You can see we've got a lovely scene going on now already for our little um, character to have fun with. And I think we're going to have. This little present in the snow, like it's dropped out the cart. Let's pop that there. Let's get another foam pad. Let's get our little wagon going down hillwards, like just over this little ridge. And then I think what we'll do is also get these little presents on foam pads as well to give a bit more dimension. Let's get that one up there. And this little smaller one, I should say. Just the air coming out the front of that. And then we've got our lovely cheeky little penguin. I think actually I just want to bring him a little bit lower. Up in there. I think. That's it. We've done our little card. So you can see we've got loads of cards there and loads of inspiration, haven't we? So bring in the. Um, we so we've made loads today. If I just. I did bring a stand, look, I come prepared. Just so we can try and get a few more of them in shot for you. There we go. <laughs> there we go. And then we've got our little cracker. And then I think we did. There you go. Can't get the other one else. I don't want to crowd it too much, but it gives you an idea of the kind of makes that we've done today. Don't think I can get this one. I'll be just a put them sneaking at the back there. So I think that's a productive hour and a half, isn't it? Really, it just shows the versatility of the festive penguin range from Avago. So uh, we have got the Natmin products on the website, so if you're new to us, go and check the Outer Craft Network website and look at the Avago collections. Um, there's loads on there, and there's also inspiration as well on the other Avago videos. So if you want to recap some um, previous shows, you can go and have a look on there, see if it inspires you to get crafting. Uh, and remember, if you want these penguins, you haven't already got them, hit that notify me when back in stock button, and then as soon as there's a reasonable quantity, we'll get them ordered. Um, I think they'll be reordered, I've got to say, because they've been so popular and people have been messaging me all the time for them. So just make sure if you want them, you hit that notify me and then we can get that done for you. So let's look at what's um, happening the rest of this week then. So tomorrow at 7 o'clock, we've got Creating Craft Products for Preview with Tony Darrick, so that's exciting. It's new stuff. And then Tuesday at 3 o'clock, we've got Funky Fossil with Sarah Gray. She's amazing as well. Um, she's a lovely lady, I've met her Sarah. So there's loads to keep watching, isn't there? So stay tuned, enjoy your crafting, and I'll see you soon. But thanks very much for joining me today. See you later, and have a Merry Christmas. Bye.